There is no progress in the transport sector. The climate target is being missed, the Expert Council on Climate Issues criticizes today for the third time in a row. Instead of the permitted 133 million tons of CO2, 146 million tons of greenhouse gases were produced in the transport sector last year. For example, we are seeing an increase in car traffic this year, which means that the Home Office measure, which was assumed to have a high mitigation effect in the Climate Protection Program at the time, may not really have this effect then. The other thing is that the gap in the transport sector is so large that you can only achieve a little bit with one measure. This morning, therefore, experts are calling for the legally established emergency program for sector transport. What you do not suspect, the traffic light factions agree on the reform of the Climate Protection Act almost at the same time, after months of discussions. This means that the environmental targets are no longer being met, such as for transport or agriculture. What matters now, as demanded by the FDP, is the overall balance sheet. Of course, the question remains why it took so long to do this, but that's not the point anymore. It is crucial that we now get a modern climate protection law that can also be complied with. And that does not lead to restrictions on freedom for citizens. Just last week, Wissing had brought driving bans into play if the climate protection law was not adopted in a timely manner. They are off the table with the agreement today. The change could be decided in the Bundestag next week. My colleague Bjorn Dake is now reporting live from Berlin. Bjorn, who is the big winner in the traffic light with this law, the FDP and its minister Wissing. It was a give and take. The FDP can indeed claim that pressure is being taken out of the transport sector. The FDP is talking about realistic climate protection. There will be no driving bans for drivers on weekends. The Greens, on the other hand, can claim for themselves that any new federal government must now submit measures on how to achieve the climate protection goals of 2040. This is new. A solar package is also new. This was negotiated in parallel. This brings benefits to the owners of balcony power plants. Less paperwork also for farmers who plan solar systems on their land. Does this strengthen the German solar industry again? I think rather the opposite because the Greens could not prevail with their idea of a bonus for the domestic solar industry. The FDP was against this. They say there are already enough solar modules on the market. There is no need for additional subsidies from tax money. So probably the next solar modules on the roofs in Bavaria will also come more from China. Let's go back to the Climate Protection Act. What is the dimension of this package? Jerk or reformchen? I think a little more than a reformchen, because this solar package belongs to it. There is a lot of simplification and debureaucratization in it. Especially important for the Sonnenland Bavaria. Overall, we are seeing the first measurable successes of this climate protection policy. For the first time, the federal government can probably meet the climate protection goals of 2030. These two agreements also help with the expansion of renewables. Between the skirt and the form, so about the middle. Bjorn, we can still read today. The traffic light is still intact, it can still work. The Climate Protection Act, it has now been stuck in the Bundestag for 10 months. The solar package is 8 months. That took a really long time. On the other hand, let's look back at the last week. Agreements on tenancy law, there is a movement on data retention, the payment card for refugees is coming. Spring seems to be doing well for the traffic light parties. There is some movement in long, deadlock disputes. But that the traffic light is intact, not even the biggest traffic light fans here in Berlin would claim that. My colleague Bjorn Dake analyzes this live in Berlin. Thank you very much.